So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to the iPhone 11 versus the iPhone 14 Pro speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go and see which one could get there first. Now the iPhone 11 is from 2019. So in just a month or so here, it'll be in its fourth year. But the iPhone 11 was so darn fast at the time I think it's gonna do pretty well here. Apple A13 Bionic, four gigs of RAM. Apple iPhone 14 Pro A16 Bionic CPU with six gigabytes of RAM, 120 hertz display. Turning on, if you are rebooting, you know, maybe you have a glitch or a bug or something, whatever you need to reboot, the iPhone 11 is gonna do that slower by about five to 10 seconds on the iPhone 14 Pro being a little bit faster. Over time though, the 14 Pro, let's say is 17, 18, Pro would probably be fast or ultra, whatever they're gonna call those phones in the future. iPhone 11, a little bit slower here. Now, when it comes to the Face ID though, those mechanisms haven't changed whatsoever. So if we do unlock these phones really quickly and we take a look at, you know, Face ID, really, it doesn't matter. You know, if you upgrade here, it's not faster. Yes, you get that dynamic island and it looks cooler, that's for sure but it's not faster. It's essentially the same thing. So iPhone 11 users, you still have the same tech on your phone right there. Now in terms of the software, what's cool is that iPhones do get updated very regularly, consistently over the long haul. And the iPhone 11 is still there at 16.1.1. Now the iPhone 14 Pro is also on that same version. Obviously it's the latest phone. So that's what we're gonna be running this test on today. And kind of just so you know, I did do a test before we run these applications. I gotta say, I was very impressed with the iPhone 11. Scrolling through though, it's just 60 hertz. That feels a little bit less smooth over here. 120 hertz feels a little smoother. However, this feels similar to say an iPhone 14, the regular model when scrolling through, stuff like that. So it's still plenty fast on the day-to-day -day for just regular swiping through the OS. I will say once in a while, the 11 can stutter if you are downloading a brand new update or you got 17 backups going at the same time, you know, updates, iCloud backups, then you might get a little stutter here and there, but it's, it's very rare. On the iPhone 14 Pro, obviously being the latest and greatest, nothing to speak of right now. All right, so let's take a look at how they do day-to-day -day in terms of application performance. We're gonna go into calendar. You can see pretty close. Let's go into calculator. A little faster on the 14 Pro, not by a whole bunch though. Let's go into weather. You could see different cities, but look like the 14 Pro is a hair quicker. We're going to App Store here, 14 Pro. Let me go back here. We'll go into this game, for example. You could see the contents were loading a little faster there. Let's do one more. And then the 11, but overall, just kind of hopping through the sub menus and stuff. That one goes to the 14 Pro, 14 Pro again. So when you have to load up some graphics and stuff, you can see definitely the 14 Pro, just a, a minuscule difference. We'll go into Instagram and you can see Instagram first there on, it looked like the 14 Pro, we'll go back home. We'll take a look here, scrolling similar. So if you're using iPhone 11, it's not like you can't run essentially the same stuff. Twitter, we'll go into my profile. That was to the right. And you could see opening up at the same time. So generally using this iPhone, the iPhone 11 in 2022, heading into 23, feels just like using a 14. So man, did you get your money's worth if you had an iPhone 11 since it first came out? Lots of Cyber Monday deals, the ridiculous amounts of deals on every single app you open. But you can see Amazon performs similar. We'll go into eBay. And you can see eBay first there for the iPhone 14 Pro. If I go to my eBay, pretty similar. Set up out of there. Groupon. 14 Pro by a hair. Things to do. And the reason why I even do this is because I'm interested to see is these apps slowing down? Is the phone generally feeling slower? You know, cause if you wanna do an upgrade, these phones aren't cheap. You invest in your iPhone for at least a few years minimum. 
You know, you want to see, am I getting a lot in return? And I think you are getting a lot in return here in an upgrade, but not in terms of the iPhone experience itself. It's not really that different. You're getting a hardware experience upgrade. So better screen, better build, gaming performance, of course, a little faster. But in terms of what you can do on the iPhone, your 11 could still do 99.8% what the iPhone 14 Pro can do. So it could do almost everything the same, you know, which is saying that, you know, people are saying Apple slows their phones down. I don't really see it here. Let's go into subway servers. And remember I did the 10R versus this phone a few days ago, and that phone did pretty well as well against this phone. So the, not that it won, it definitely didn't win. 14 Pro won out in pretty much everything, but the 11, man, so much better performing than an iPhone 10R. I even would go as far as to say as if you wanted to get a budget iPhone, the 11 wouldn't be a bad option right now. It still has the latest software, still has pretty good dual camera. Essentially a similar experience to the main 14, but with the rounded body. You could see Crossy Row was first on the iPhone 14 Pro. So again, if you are into the games, you'll want to swing for the newer phone. It's going to have the faster GPU, CPU performance for stuff like that. That's the same reason people go upgrade to a new Xbox or a new PS. You know, they want to get the faster graphics, the faster SSD. They just want things to be quicker for their gaming experience. It's a huge reason to upgrade to this these newer iPhones. Let's go into Geekbench 5. But if you're a general user, you're going to see not substantial gains in real world use, but definitely a little bit smoother. And, vert and you will notice the experience feeling slicker, more butter smooth on the iPhone 14 Pro due to 120 Hertz. Throw 120 Hertz on the iPhone 11, it would be even closer. And then you could see even in video editing, because iMovie is definitely designed well for iPhone, as is things like LumaFusion. They both can do things like video edit even now. So an iPhone 11 on a steal of a budget deal would actually be a pretty good starter iPhone right now. Whereas the 14 Pro, one out in games. Basically, that's it right here. It just went out a little bit in games and maybe, is this a good way to describe it? Maybe that much faster in some applications? And the 11 was maybe that much faster in a couple of sub menus and stuff like that. But overall, not much to speak of, just gaming performance mostly. All right, so enough of the, they're similar, they're similar, they're similar. Well, they're not similar in RAM. Two gigs more on 14 Pro versus four gig on the 11. So what I'm gonna do is let's go through these applications really quickly here and see if the 11 can hold everything without any stutters, without any reloads or delays. And if it can do that and we'll do the 14 Pro and it matches that, then we'll be pretty much able to say that there's virtually not gonna be a major difference, even in going through back and forth applications. I will say having the 60 Hertz doesn't feel quite as smooth when reopening these applications. That looks like a total reload there, but just one application, I'm guessing we're gonna need more to stutter up the 11. Let's go over here. Let's check out the iPhone 14 Pro. You can just see that this is where that 120 hertz shows when you're hopping between applications, it's smooth. Oh yeah. But so far, I will say that OLED just looks way better too. If you're into, you know, contrasty colors and deep blacks. Yeah, App Store didn't reload here. Generally, it feels a lot better to swipe in between applications and things like that. It feels faster on the 14 Pro. So this is an area I would say it's worth the upgrade. All right, so here we are pushing the CPUs through something like Geekbench 5. You can see 1893, 5417, and this has been finished for about 25 seconds already. So when you really demand the power, which how often will you, the iPhone 14 Pro leads it by a long shot, mostly in that multi-core score, not so much in that single core. You can see versus the competition, the iPhone 14 Pro is actually faster than some iPad Pros. So that's for sure. Whereas the 11 is just about, you know, decent. It's not, it's not faster than a lot of phones, but it's not slow either. It's still a very respectable 
the vise overall, so not bad there. We're gonna go ahead now and take it over to 3D Mark and we'll do a wildlife extreme test and I'll be back with their frame rates and their scores. All right guys, so here is my final results for Wildlife Extreme. Take a look at the iPhone 11 versus the 14 Pro. When it comes to the frame rates, that's substantial right there. So yes, you have to push it though. Like I said earlier, you're not, you didn't see much pushing it here in this video, but if we did really push them in the actual game, the iPhone 11 would definitely not be the better performer here. Let's go ahead now and just quickly do a export of the same video here. I loaded up on both phones. They're only about a minute and 53. We'll just see how they do this. So let's go to save video and we'll export them out. I'll be back when this is done. So weirdly, the iPhone 11 had this done first. I don't know how that's possible, but it was done first. So that could just show you that iMovie is super well optimized, but also can let you know that you can still do some good stuff on the iPhone 11, even though it's older. I'm not pitching the iPhone 11. The 14 Pro is the phone to get if you want top of the line iPhone right now. We all know that. I will tell you, this phone feels much warmer. And it's not hot, but it feels much warmer than the 14 Pro, so you know this phone is more efficient right here. Also, opening up the cameras, we could do that as well. Hold on. We could do that as well on both phones, and you're not gonna miss a moment on either phone, that is for sure. But you will be gaining more options to shoot a photo, macro modes for the 14 Pro, so definitely there are some upgrades. Let me know if you guys wanna see a full comparison on these two. Overall, I would say that Generally, these phones have a similar experience, one being more premium, one being more round, one being more square, but the core functionality is still generally the same. This just feels like a premium version of this. So if you wanna do an upgrade, you want something a little nicer than what you had, go for it. You're gonna be very happy. Thumbs up if you found the video helpful, entertaining, and informing. Do me a favor, subscribe if you haven't already. We got plenty more videos coming your way. I'll catch you on the next one, Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.